Mark 11. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Lift up the gates from white doors, the King of glory is coming. Through city streets and living lights, we see your spirit moving. Now his kingdom comes, now his will be done. Lift up your banners and practice your praise. Of your mouth with that glorious name, Jesus, warrior Jesus. Shout all you people and dance through the town. Come celebrate because heaven's come down. Jesus, welcome King Jesus. Tell him our God is with us Come prophesy the now's the time Get ready, church, let's rise up Now his kingdom comes Now his will be done Lift up your banners and practice your praise Fill up your mouths with that glorious name Celebrate because heaven's come down. Jesus, welcome King Jesus. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false, he will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory.
Good morning, church. Hey, if you don't know us, my name is Ty Davis, and this is my wife, Sean. Hey, we're so glad that you joined us online this Palm Sunday, and we hope that you're ready to worship this morning. And what a fun song and an awesome start to our service that was. Yeah, it was so much fun. And hey, thanks so much to all of our TCC kids who sent in videos to help us kick off our service this morning with a little taste of what we traditionally would do in a Palm Sunday service. This Easter season looks a little different this year, but we're excited about the opportunity to reach people for Christ in new ways, and we're looking forward to hearing how the Lord moves in your lives during this season as well. That's right, we've so missed being physically together, and while we can't fully be together yet, we're really excited about our drive-in Easter service at the International Agri Center next Sunday at 10 a.m. That's right, this service is going to be an amazing experience of coming together for worship and celebration while respecting social distancing protocols. Pile your whole family in the car and drive over to the Agri Center next Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus at our Easter Sunday drive-in service. And we're still figuring out the logistics of whether we'll use a frequency in your car radio to get sound to you or if we're just going to set up a huge sound system. But either way, it's going to be such a special and unique time of worship that morning. You won't want to miss it. We'll be sharing as much info with you as possible as we figure this all out. And we appreciate your grace and your patience as we do our best to make this happen. And stay tuned to our TCC weekly email uh, sent on Thursdays and our social media accounts on Facebook and Instagram for the latest details on that service as well as other updates from around TCC. We're also going to have our Good Friday service online this Friday at 6 p.m. You'll be able to access the service just as you do on our Sunday morning services through YouTube, Facebook, or our website. And we're going to make some space in that service for you to take communion together at home with your family. So be sure to pick up some bread and juice on your next grocery run in preparation for that time. I know we are throwing a lot of new stuff at you lately, and we are so appreciative of your flexibility and encouragement during this season. We know it's different, we know it's weird, but we also know that Jesus is still king, and he is still on the throne, and he is still worthy to be praised. So let's throw it back to the band now as we go into a time of worship, and you better run. See ya. Would you guys join us as we worship together now? Take it away, worship team.
Well, hey, good morning, TCC. Welcome to our Palm uh, Sunday service. Um, I'm back here in the sanctuary. I, I love this space. Um, can't wait till we're all back together here uh, for sure. And so um, even wore a sport coat because I know all of you are so dressed up uh, this morning according to you know what Shane uh, did for us last week. So anyway, here we are and um, just want to thank the kids for sending in your, your videos for the, with the palm branches for the song. And thanks to the team. They're doing such a, a great job. If you weren't able to send something in, kids, I, I miss you so much. Maybe you could text me. I, I think most of your parents have my cell number. Text me. You know, you doing something with palm branches or with your coats or just to say hi, okay? I'd, I'd, love, to, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, let's go to God's Word now. We're going to use Mark. Uh, we are in a series called Mark, and today I am entitling this message, Come Out of the Crowd. And so we're going to go back just a few chapters. We're going to be in chapter 13 just for a few minutes at the end of the service, but we're going to be in chapter 11 with the triumphal entry. And so let's look at that. As they were approaching, it says, Jerusalem, and came to Bethpage and Bethany. This is chapter 11, verse 1. And the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Tell them the Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at the doorway, and it just goes on to say that it happened just as he said it. Now picking up now in verse 9, those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple he looked around at everything, it says, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with his 12. Let's pray. Father, as we look at this passage and feel the impact uh, of all of this, we pray now that you would meet us here uh, by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, Jesus certainly has the attention of the crowd uh, right now. I, I think we can kind of feel that. It seems like maybe, you know, that Jesus has our attention a little more. Now we're asking different questions. He certainly has my attention. And wow, what a crowd it was this day. We have a couple different crowds kind of mashing together. Uh, in John 12, it talks about that a crowd had gone out to Bethany, uh, where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus had uh, lived, and they, they did a dinner party for him when he arrived. And, and now that crowd, of course, who went out, because who doesn't want to see a guy who was raised from the dead? I mean, what a sight that would be. I mean, the guy doesn't even have to say anything, and he has a testimony. Um, so much so that the Jews already that's rumbling around are trying to figure out how they can kill not only Jesus, but Lazarus as well because of what a testimony is to Jesus. And so there's this energy building up. So the crowd is coming back down kind of the hill or going up out of Bethany and then coming into the, the city. But then also the crowd is coming out to meet him. And so this big mash of, of the crowd. And uh, it says that... Uh, in uh, Mark 11, it says that many threw their coats and their, you know, the, the palm branches. That's where we get it. And this was just fitting for a king. This was communicating clearly royalty, someone super special. And of course, that, um, that got, you know, the religious leaders really anxious and, and angry as well. But I just want you to picture this event. It's, it really is something. I mean, we're talking about some 500,000 people, maybe even more, says Josephus, uh, the historian, who are coming into a very kind of small area um, for, for the Passover. And, you know, yeah, picture it, smell it, listen. I mean, the noise, the intensity, uh, of course, is, is just intense. And, you know, I, I bet there were kids there. And, and the kids, of course, are being, you know, held on to their parents in, in, in case they get lost. I mean, can you imagine, you know, you know what that feels like when you have your kids in a huge, huge group. And then 
Of course, they can't see, so it's kind of scary, isn't it, kids, when you're so short and you can't see until your dad puts you up on your shoulders, and, you know, then you can see, then you're taller than everyone, and, you know, the kids were probably doing the same thing that the parents were saying, Hosanna, and, you know, saying all they didn't really understand, but that's really how our kids learn to worship, as they, they watch and they, they follow their parents. And I bet you that was happening, too. And then, of course, there were youth, and they were liking the crowds, too, I'm sure, especially the cute one across the way. I mean, this is, this is real time, real space, a real event in history, and you can, you can feel um, all that which is going on. And there was absolutely uh, a lot um, going on. The crowds are going like, well, what's going on? In Matthew's version, we have Matthew 21, verse 10, and when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, and they were saying, who is this? And the crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Who is this? This is a great question. This is one that Shane started off with that we were going to have to answer. And a couple weeks ago, when we were in Caesarea Philippi, Jesus said, who do people say that I am? And, and you, you and I are in a place this week, this Semana Santa, Holy Week, where, again, we're, we're going to have to answer, you know, uh, who, who is this? Who, who, do, who do we believe Jesus is? For real now. Um, and and uh, that's what's asked here. Who, you know, who, who is this is a, is a good question. But mostly people are just being carried along by the crowd. You know, the, the, the crowds, you know how crowds are. They just kind of carry you along. You've been to a big concert or a, or a sporting event or a big huge parade or whatever. You just kind of go with the crowd. And sometimes you do things that you wouldn't normally do by yourself because you're just part of the crowd. And sometimes that's, you know, that's good. You know, and, and I bet you, you and I both have done some things in crowds that we kind of regret later that we wouldn't do. But because it, the whole crowd was doing it, you know, we kind of, we went along with them. So that's from the crowd's perspective. There's just this buzz. From Jesus' perspective, he's on, the, on the, um, the donkey, the colt coming in. Now he is maybe a little higher, and he can kind of see over them. And uh, he, again, uh, shows us that he is, he is not out of control, that this isn't just happening to them. That he is initiating this uh, conflict that's going to happen this week. He is sending a message clearly, and he, he knows what the message is, and he knows that certainly the religious leaders are catching what the message, and, and even a lot of the people there would know, like, oh, what this, this is like what was prophesied way, way back in, you know, some four or five hundred years prior to this event. So we have this in Zechariah 9. Uh, that says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, a, on a colt, the foal of the donkey. People didn't miss this prophecy, and they knew that something of this was happening right then. Shane mentioned Psalm 118 last week. It certainly is part of what's being said. Hosanna, Psalm 118, verse 25 says, Lord, save us. That is what the word Hosanna, save us now. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we will bless you. So this idea, again, this word Hosanna means, you know, save us. Save us now. And that's what they are, that they're yelling out. It's also this declaration of praise and worship. Now, the timing of this day is also important, and, and Jesus knows this for sure and is doing this on purpose. And, and I'm guessing that people are catching this as well, is that this is on Lamb Selection Day. So another thing that's going on on this day is that people are having to, to get their lambs, and there's, there's, there were rules. If you go back to Exodus 12, you see the guidelines for that without blemish, year old. Of course, the Sadducees had this racket where they were... You know, they had these lambs that they would raise and then sell at exorbitant prices and such. And this is one of the things that gets Jesus so angry. But um, it's lamb selection day. And so, again, makes you think, that's right. Didn't John the Baptist say, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world? He, indeed, he did. And, and Jesus is making this direct declaration. I am God's chosen lamb. And you should choose 
you should choose me today as the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. This isn't lost on the Apostle Paul later who, who writes in 1 Corinthians 5, 7 that he, he identifies Christ, our Passover lamb, he says. Book of Revelation makes some 20 references to Jesus as a lamb. And of course, John the Baptist's um, declaration, this is the Lamb of God, and he is going to take away the sins of the world and our sins as well. Interestingly, that it had to be a lamb without blemish, and that had to be declared. And some think that, you know, it was uh, Pilate, of all people, who four days later said, I, I find nothing wrong with him. He, he makes that declaration that this lamb was, was uh, without fault. Kind of interesting things, and so much more going on we won't get into today. Well, the religious leaders certainly were not... We're not happy. We have other references where they say to Jesus, hey, stop this. Stop these people. And Jesus says, listen, if I stop them, even rocks are going to cry out. This is going to happen. You know, they're going to, it's going to be, I am going to be worshipped in this day. Uh, they, they are frustrated. Like they even, another place declares, look, the whole world is going out to them. We're not getting anywhere here. So, so much frustration, so much angst, so much anger from that from that group just trying to figure out how are we going to get rid of this guy? How are we going to, how are we going to kill him? Um, and you know that there's something going on spiritually as well. I mean, just with angels and, and the demons and just this spiritual clash that is going to happen during the course of, uh, of this week. Um, so, so much energy, buzz. You know, that I think about that one, uh, the guy is like, let's get ready to rumble. I mean, it's, it's all coming in. Here they come in. And then what happens? What happens? Did you catch this in verse 11? Verse 11 says this, And he entered Jerusalem, and he went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, and it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Like, what happened? Like, Nothing. Nothing, not really anything. I mean, talk about anticlimactic, all this energy, and then, and then nothing happens. It doesn't lead to a, a mob against the Roman fortress. He doesn't even give some sort of stirring speech. He doesn't do anything in the temple. He just, he just looks around, and, and then he leaves. And so like almost like a flash mob, you know? It's, it's all of a sudden there, and then it all of a sudden just dissipates dissipates into the crowd as it did here where that crowd that was with them all of a sudden just dissipated into the rest of the Passover crowd. What a disappointment for those who had hailed his entry, who were so looking forward to this Messiah. What a, what a letdown. I mean, there was this political desire. Get, let's get rid of the Romans. They were so hopeful. Here it is. Here it is. And what a letdown. There was this social desire, too. I mean, this guy, he could make bread. I mean, talk about a blessing that would be. And, and not anything around that either. But now, don't, don't understand what I'm not saying. I mean, again, Jesus, although is no, is no Republican or Democrat or anything that, I mean, the best he would say is like, well, give to Caesar what Caesar and God's God's. I mean, he just didn't go there, but he will hold us accountable as leaders. He will hold our leaders accountable. Um, and he is into social justice as well. He cares about the poor and he calls his church and his people to to love in his name and give in his name and be generous in his name it, by all means. But his, but his main call, his main vision statement, as it were, our job description, was declared for us by him, he himself in Luke 19. And this was with Zacchaeus, that whole story. But he says, for the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. That's what he was coming to do, to seek and save the lost. And what's going to happen in this week is about seeking and saving uh, the lost. But there were people, they were, they were very disappointed, very upset with Jesus and how all this went. And I, I wonder, that, that strikes me as a, a very relevant thing for us. I, I think there are many of us who have gone to God and prayed in Jesus' name and asked for things and felt very disappointed, very discouraged that it didn't go 
of the way we had asked, the way that we had thought. We had expectations of God, and it didn't, it didn't go that way, and certainly that was the case. So I wonder what your response is, or what your response has been. To, in here, the response is dramatic. The, these same people, many who are saying, Hosanna in the highest, praise him, you know, and all the things that we just were saying. Now, in later in the week, you know, I just, I just wonder how many of them now are saying, crucify him. I mean, the swing has been dramatic. He's not come through for them, and now they turn on him. I, I, I'm just wondering if that may be your response at times, too, where you've said, boy, if this is... If this is this following Jesus thing that you're talking about, if this is a life in Christ, and I, you know, I had hard things and he didn't come through, like I'm, I, I'm, no thanks, no thanks. Now, um, let you, let, let me tell you a little bit about my experience with this. Um, I, I've been discouraged or disappointed. I know I, I'm a care pastor, so I'm with a lot of people who go through really, really hard things, excruciatingly difficult, difficult things. Everything that, I mean, it, it's no respecter of persons in this life. We're going to have trouble. But my experience with so many, with so many have been that even in the face of that, they, they give praise to the Lord. They say, oh, Jesus has been so good to me, Steve. He, he has been there for me so real. Through their tears, through their grief, they are making declaration of praise and worship to, to Jesus. Not turning away from him, but turning toward him and seeing how others come around them. Um, again, this is all through scripture, friends, that we have this in Psalm 13. There's so many uh, psalms of lament where it starts with, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? But then it ends with, I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Deep in the Old Testament, Habakkuk, same thing. There might be, it says, Though the fig tree doesn't bud, there be no grapes in the vine, no olive crop, the olive crop fails. I mean, it just goes through all these horrible things that happen, and it says, Yet, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. I mean, I could go on and on with this. Even the song, It Is Well With My Soul, was written by a guy. This is a great hymn. It's a favorite of a lot of people. It's well with my soul. It's really a relevant kind of song for right now. Is it well with your soul? Mind, uh, will, and emotions that get so frayed when things like this are going on. And for the, the author of that song, um, you know, he had lost a son to pneumonia. I mean, we're experiencing that now. Um, loses four daughters at sea, and only his wife lives. And as he's going to meet her, he writes this song. It is, it is well with my soul when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. So it's a great declaration of hope and praise. What, what did he have? What, what do these people that I remember, what do they have? What do they know that, that maybe you don't know today? And I will say that it's not so much what, although it is what, it is also who. Who do they know? They know this Jesus. They've, they've made a, um, they've started of a relationship. They've given their life over to Jesus, and he has given them his life, and they've experienced his salvation, and then that which only he can bring to us, and um, that is what we're going to be offered uh, this week, as well with my soul. Well, let's, let's just continue very quickly then as we uh, move toward chapter 13. We can't go past the fact that Jesus does come back to Jerusalem. And so he comes back in chapter 11. We see that he enters into the, uh, into the temple, and now he does turn some tables. It's, it's like he, he saw what he needed to see the day before, and when he came back, he says, this is, and he turns the tables. There's a lot of table turning right now, things that are getting flipped in our lives. It's a refining time in our world, but certainly in in, in our lives as Jesus followers, certainly in mine, that's for sure. 
And how important that is that our lives get refined, that those things get flipped, those things that we did think, oh, that's so important, I really need that. Really, we don't. We really did. Some of that which is most important really comes to the surface when there is adversity. And, and then Jesus says, listen, listen, my, my house, and now you and I are his house as far as Jesus. My house is going to be called a house of prayer. And I know there's a whole lot of praying going on uh, these days. I certainly hope so as we pray for our first responders, for our nurses, doctors. I mean, we need to come together to really lift up uh, those who, who most need them. And then pray, and then pray that Jesus would be received and, and looked at again, especially in this holy, holy week. Well, let's just continue then. Chapter 13 and um, they're back in the they're back in the temple, and um, and it starts rather innocently where where Jesus' disciples make reference like wow look at the like this these, this is magnificent building it says as, as they were leaving the temple one of his disciples look teacher what massive stones what magnificent buildings and and uh, indeed they it, indeed they were I mean these were these were thirty seven feet you know, long by 12 feet by 18 feet wide. I mean, it's just like, how did they do that? I mean, without all machinery and all that. I mean, it, it was really something to see. And, and Jesus says, do you see all these great buildings? Not one here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. So historically, we know that what Jesus is referring to is the fact that, you know, that some 35 years after his death and resurrection, you know, the Jews really rebel, in which case then the Romans come and really squelch it, ending in 70 AD where they completely destroy uh, Jerusalem. So that's one thing Jesus is referring to, but he's looking ahead. All of a sudden it gets real prophetic and he's looking ahead, the fact that, yeah, Jesus just came in uh, on, a, on a donkey as a humble servant, but he's pointing out the fact that he is going to come again. And when he comes again, uh, it's not going to be as a humble servant. It's going to be as a, a victorious king. And um, he's going to come with his angels. And he's going to gather his children uh, to himself. And so the disciples, they want to know, what, what was that about? So they're now again outside the city. They're on the uh, Mount of Olives. They can look down onto the scene. It's a beautiful place. And they're asking about him. And Jesus goes on. And if you look through chapter 13, we're going to just do this very quickly. He says, you know, here are some of the things that, that are going to be happening there. There's going to be wars, earthquakes, persecution, famines, families in conflict with one another. There's going to be betrayal. I mean, does any of this sound familiar? I mean, I know, I know many have asked, is this it? Is this the end? I don't, I don't believe it is. The Bible says we're not going to know when, but certainly we're thinking about that. I've seen posts by college students like, uh, you know, is what's going on? Is this the end? Is it's a good question. We, we need to be ready. That, I mean, that's kind of the point. We need to be re ready. So there's that. And then he goes on to say, but there's going to be promises and provision uh, for God's people. Like when you're really up against it and you're having to answer for your faith, like many do throughout the world and who are being persecuted and, and uh, you know, property and lives taken because of their relationship with Jesus. He, you know, he says, I'm going to give you the words that you need. The Holy Spirit will be with you. Um, he talks about here in chapter 13 that, that the, the gospel is going to be preached to all nations. That this good news is going to go out to, uh, to the world. A couple, couple big ideas uh, that come out. It, verse 13, that this life of following Jesus, it, it might not be that easy of a life. For you and for me. It says, everyone will hate you because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. I mean, it's really something, and that is happening in other parts of the world, maybe even in, in your life in one way or the other. And then the second big idea is that he is going to return. He, he is going to come back. Verse 26, with great power and glory, send his angels ahead of us. And as I look through chapter 13, and you can quickly look to as we finish today, you're going to see 
uh, some very similar words. I'll just read them very quickly. Verse 5, watch out that no one deceives you. There's going to be a lot of messages out there. Man, are there a lot of messages right now. And he's saying, watch out. Watch out what you believe. You know, test it out. Watch. Many will come in my name making a claim. Verse 9, be on your guard. Verse 33, be on your guard. Be alert. Keep watch, he says in verse 35. Verse 37, it's the last word of that chapter is like watch. Like keep your eyes open. Keep your heart open. What, what's really going on? And I, I have a sense that we are in this place now that we really do have our eyes open in, in a different way. In verse 32, it says, no one knows the day or the hour, um, but, but he is going to come back. And Jesus has people's attention on this Palm Sunday, for sure. Uh, and I think he has our attention as well. Um, we close today. I, I, would, I would want you to consider uh, a couple couple things as we will confront both the words and actions of this man Jesus during this week what what do you believe you know are you ready for his return I mean I invite you today just to consider to step out of the crowd because when it comes down to it it's not going to be about the crowd it's going to be about you and the Lord and your connection to him, your yielding to him. Um, you, you may want this morning to, to come out of the crowd. Maybe you're saying all the right things, you're doing all the right things, but it, it has just been kind of long with the crowd. And today it's, is the day, or when you're by yourself this week at some point, is that it's time to, to, to step out of the crowd and say, no, I... I want to follow you, Jesus, with a sincere heart. I give you my life. I accept you as the, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Not the whole world, but my sin. I confess that to you, and I want to, I want to follow you as my Lord and my Savior. And maybe you are more on the other side where you've been, you've been angry at God for a long time. Or you've been worshiping other gods, little g, and they're just not coming through for you right now and you're in a place like you're asking too who is this Jesus I would I would invite you this week join us for for our um, services this week uh, Good Friday we'll be out at the Agra Center on Easter Lord willing love to have you out there but that you would again come to Jesus as the the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world step out of the crowd the flow that you've been in and um, and accept him. Say yes to him. Begin following. Learn more of his ways. We'd love to be a, a part of that. And um, yeah, I just want to take a moment, pray for us, and then we will bless you. Father, I thank you for this time in your word. We thank you for your great act of love, the, the many things that you were even communicating on this day this palm sunday so many years ago i pray that many today and in these coming days throughout the world would say yes to you as so many things are being kind of stripped away from us that we would again see you for who you are um, i pray lord for my friends today who who most need you i pray for those first responders for for the, the nurses, the doctors, Lord, who are tired, who, who are up against it hard. Father, I pray for those who, who are in hospitals or in nursing homes, Lord, who we love so much, who we can't be with because you know, there's that, that rule. And I pray that you would be close to them by the power of your spirit. But mostly, Lord, I pray that you would draw many to yourself. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us for this service this morning. And thank you to those who continue to give generously. If you'd like to give your tithes and offerings online, you can click the giving link on our website or in any of our emails. If you prefer to write a check and mail it in, you can find our address here on the screen. 
We're gonna throw it back to our worship team now for a benediction song to close our service today. But don't forget to join us online this Friday at 6 p.m. for our Good Friday service, and then at the International Agri Center next Sunday for our Easter Sunday drive-in service. We can't wait to see you then. God bless.